Welcome to my channel. It's winter, it's very cold outside, and everything alive seems, seems to be waiting for spring, for more sunshine, for higher temperatures, except for this plant. It's in bloom. And I almost missed the flower, I almost missed the bloom, because nothing else is doing anything interesting right now, so I'm not even watching the plants and I don't even expect them to do anything. Anyways, it happened and I am thrilled to share it with you. Look how beautiful the flower is. This is Huernia zebrina and Huernia zebrina belongs to a very interesting group of plants called Stapeliads. Stapeliads are pollinated by flies and they have very weird flowers because the flowers are attracting flies. The flowers want to look attractive to the flies in order for them to sit on them and pollinate the, the flower. And flies, unlike bees, they are not interested in bright colors, they are not interested in, ne in nectar or pollen. What they are interested is something to lay their eggs on. And flies lay eggs on rotting meat, on something, on something that is in the garbage that is not edible for humans but would be perfect for the maggots when they hatch from the eggs that the flies would lay on those things that the maggots would eat and become flies themselves survive and survive that stage and become flies themselves stapeliads are tricking the flies because they do look like rotting meat. They have the colors of burgundy, um, dull red, yellow, just like meat would look. Not only that, they also smell like a garbage can. Not this one. This one is too small to produce enough smell to be detected by a human nose, but flies can... Um, can do that and if this flower was open in the summertime and if there were flies around, if the windows were open, flies would be attracted by this, by the smell and by the looks of this flower for sure. It happens that um, I find maggots on Stapeliad's flowers. <coughs> so, this plant is blooming now, nothing will pollinate it, and it is difficult to pollinate a stapeliad flower with a brush to artificially pollinate it. So this plant will not produce seeds, this flower will not produce seeds, but it is very easy to propagate this plant from cuttings. As you can see the plant it's a stem succulent and the stems are growing one from the other and if you break off one of these sections and put it in the either water or directly into soil, they will produce roots. What I do it, I put it in the soil directly and I don't water it for a while, then once the plant has been in the soil for a while, then I start watering and the roots develop. I know that some people, some growers are putting the stems directly in the water, wait for the roots to appear and then plant the plant. I didn't try it, however I saw it um, uh, and I saw someone, uh, someone's way of doing it and he was successful, so I am passing on this method to you as well. In, the, in nature, these stems, these stem sections, these stems would not be falling, uh, growing down, would spread on the ground and they would be um, uh, growing roots into the ground and that way the plant would cover more and more area. But I think it's quite attractive here anyways, even if it's, even if, when the, when the stems are f just growing down, I find it quite attractive, especially when there is a flower on those, on those uh, plants. They are quite easy to grow, they are not fussy growers, however, if they are kept dry for too long, this is what happens. I'm not sure whether you can see it, 
there is a stem here, let me show it to you. There is a stem here that is completely dry and hard at the tip. Can you see it? This is the stem and uh, this is because the plant was left dry for a while and this is not a big part of the stem but if left dry for a longer time the entire plant would just dry out. If the plant is overwatered, but again it would have to be the plant would have to be overwatered for a long time, stay in the water, it will turn yellow, completely yellow, but there is always a way of saving the plant even if the stems are turning yellow because the ones closer to the ground uh, die first. So if it happens, if someone sees that the uh, some of the stems are turning yellow, one needs to just break off a stem section from uh, a healthy a healthy stem section rooted and that way the plant will be save, saved. So um, they are quite easy plants to grow. They don't mind not being watered in the winter for a long time. However, if you water them, look what happens. You see, that's, that's, um, this is what happens. There are flowers on them. In the summertime, when there is more sunshine, when the days are longer, there are quite many flowers on them, especially if you fertilize the plant. Uh, the right fertilizer for it would for it would be 20, 20, 20, but I don't fertilize it too often. I just fertilize it once in a very, very long while. Okay, so this is it. This is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you like my Huernia zebrina. I think it's a very fascinating flower. It's so unique, it's so different. It looks a little bit like a plastic flower. And the fact that it is tricking the flies, that it is um, a product of evolution, such a clever way of of attracting of attracting a pollinator, very unique in nature. Well, thank you very much for watching it and have an amazing day.